gonna take you back to the past. He's gonna take you back to the past. To play the shitty games and suck ass, he'd rather have a buffalo. Take a diarrhea dump in his ear. He'd rather eat the rotten asshole of a roadkill stuck and down it with me. He's the angriest gamer you ever heard. He's the angry Nintendo nerd. He's the angry Atari Sega nerd. He's the angry video game. We've only touched upon some of the many classic gaming consoles like the Atari 2600, but now it's time to introduce you to two of its competitors. Feeling down and dirty, feeling kind of mean. Exhibit A, the Intellivision. I've been from one to another extreme. Exhibit B, the ColecoVision. This time I had a good time, ain't got time to wait. Both tried to take down Atari and both had a similar library of games. I wanna stick around till I can't see straight. It's like today, you got all these games, you don't know which way to look. First, we're going to talk about the Intellivision. It was test marketed in 1979, but officially released in 1980. Notice its fine wood texture. Everything back then was made of wood. You know the Stone Age? Well, that was the Wood Age. The Intellivision came from Mattel Electronics. Now, you know what else they made? The Power Glove. Now, that's a bad sign right there, but it was a great game system for its time. Now, I'm going to whip through a bunch of random games, mostly shitty ones, but I'm going to tell you right now, I have three common complaints. Number one, many of the games are very similar to other games, and often they're blatant copies. Number two, without instructions, they're difficult to understand how to play. Number three, the controls suck ass. And in this regard, the main problem is the controllers. Why a numeric keypad? This is a video game controller, not a phone. Then there's two little buttons on each side, which are usually the fire buttons. It's awkward to handle. And rather than a joystick or a control pad of some kind, you get this weird disc. Sometimes in the heat of the game, you can actually jam your fingernail on it. It also acts as a button, so in total, that's 17 buttons. And for games this complex, you really need that many. When you pop in a game, the first thing you do is try every button before you figure out which ones do anything. Most of them don't do jack shit and it's different for each game. That's why many of the games come with overlays. You slide it over the keys and now you can see what they do. It helps out, but damn, what a shitload of fuck. And the games barely fit in the cartridge slot. It's like trying to stick your dick in a Cheerio. So this is Space Battle. Sounds promising enough, but okay, what's this? None of the buttons do anything but make fart noises. And the overlay has a bunch of Triforces. Is this where they came from? All you gotta do is wait for the squadrons to meet the aliens, and then it brings up the battle screen where you shoot blueberry pancakes. This should be the whole game. Why does this part even exist? Next, uh, I don't know, let's try Mission X. More like Mission Ass. It's a 2D shooter, but it's real hard to shoot things. I mean, you have to be at the exact altitude. Two rises up and eight goes down, and the fire buttons are on the side. I mean, that's great, right? Why not spread the buttons out as much as possible? Alright, what's next? How about Utopia? It's kind of a precursor to SimCity. You're basically the god of an island. You build stuff and storms come by and, uh... Wow. All I can say is that back in 1981, people had a lot more imagination. Okay, how about He-Man? Oh man, I thought it was gonna be He-Man. So you're flying around in the Wind Raider, shooting at stuff. I think on the ground, that's Skeletor. You drop bombs on him and that's it. Wait, did I just call that white square a bomb? See, that's using your imagination. 
Vectron. In the 80s, everything was Tron. Megatron, Voltron, Tron the movie. You get the idea. This is a weird, weird game. The first challenge is to figure out which of these indescribable objects you're controlling. So, guess what? I think you're this green V. You can shoot at stuff, but you can't move. And that's just fantastic, because there's a big gleaming box immediately blocking your path. I'm not gonna lie, I don't get it. Now speaking of Tron, here we have Tron Deadly Discs. You just run around throwing shit at people. It seems like it would be a fun little game, but what ruins it for me is how ass the controls are! Rather than having one simple fire button and aiming with the joypad or disc or whatever, the keypad determines which direction you shoot. SHIT THE FUCK! Thin Ice. Okay, you're a penguin ice skating around, collecting torches, or they could be McDonald french fries, who knows. The whole time there's a seal on your ass which kills you, but the black penguins do absolutely nothing. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Well, advanced is right. For the time, it's a pretty complicated game. You start out moving some dots around on the map screen. Then you go into caves, you fight monsters, and find items. What are those, jacks? Can I pick them up? I guess not. The limited visibility is pretty annoying, and without the overlay or any instructions, I gotta admit, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But, this is one of the granddaddies of adventure games. Alright, what do we got here? Space Spartans? Man, what the hell does that mean? A Spartan in space? Was Marvin the Martian a space Spartan? You got this grid screen and you shoot shit, which looks like TIE fighters. Microsurgeon. The picture reminds me of Slim Goodbody, and I can't believe I'm making that kind of reference. But anyway, you control a barely visible dot on the screen, moving around the human body. There's spiders and clouds floating around, and... I doubt this thing's medically accurate. You just explore all the guts, technically making it the goriest game ever made. But it only goes so far. Guess the piss and shit zone just didn't do it. Frog Bog. You're a frog, and the goal is to eat as many flies as you can. It's the same thing as frogs and flies on the Atari 2600, but the graphics are way better. On Atari, the flies are just flickering dots. However, it's more fun to play because of its fluent control. It's a fine example of better graphics don't make a better game. Buzz Bombers. Now, this is funny. You kill a bunch of bees with bug spray, but no, you don't use a can of bug spray. You are the can of bug spray. There's also a hummingbird you can shoot at, but it doesn't seem to do anything. You know when bees sting you? Their asses break off and they die. Space Hawk. Man, everything begins with space. So you're just a guy floating around space shooting green slime. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the bubbles are coming. Gotta find the- Ah! Mother of a fuck! It'd be so much easier to move if you could just use the disc. Instead, it's the damn keypad. Uh-oh, here comes the Space Hawk. Gotta move, gotta move. Damn! I wiped my ass on this game. Boxing. Okay. Yeah, boxing. This sucks. Snafu. You have to keep the line going as long as possible without touching the other lines or hitting your own. It's the bare basics of graphics, but surprisingly, it's a pretty fun game. Okay, now we gotta move on, but let me introduce the IntelliVoice Voice Synthesis Module. What the fuck is that? Well, it makes your games talk. Yeah, now at the time, the idea of having voices in video games was a new thing. But unfortunately, only a few games were compatible, like B-17 Bomber. Mattel Electronics presents... B-17 Bomber. B-17 Bomber. B-17 Bomber. Alright, fuck the game. Let's try Bomb Squad. Mattel Electronics presents... Bomb Squad. They'll never do it in time. The code, the code, figure out the code. What? Guess I gotta defuse the bomb. It won't be easy. Replace this third, this oh. fourth, this second, this first. Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs>